Hi, in this tutorial we're gonna take a look how to stream a live video over a network with Chrysalis Cloud. Our goal is to retrieve that live stream from Chrysalis Cloud uh, image by image. That means in a format that's able to be fed in various image manipulation libraries or machine learning algorithms. In our specific case, we'll keep it simple. That means we just want to display it with OpenCV. Instead of using a real camera, we'll be using OBS Studio. Although we could use any RTMP camera, we choose to use OBS Studio in this case because we can insert any kind of movie or a clip that we want to have later on for machine learning purposes or image manipulation purposes. OBS Studio is free, you can download it, install it on any operating system. Then we'll need a streaming server and a little bit of a Python code. We'll make use of Chrysalis Cloud Python SDK. It will manage for us possible network fluctuations. Um, it will handle the cases when the camera can disconnect and then reconnect again. It can also handle the cases with packet loss. Um, and, and the best of it is it actually all embeds all of that in one line of code. So let's get to it. First, we're going to set up a streaming server. You visit chriscloud.com and you can register for a month of free streaming for one camera. Since I'm already logged in, I go directly to the console and select your first RTMP stream. We name it, in this case Tutorial01, and it should take just about a second. After the streaming server is created, we have all the information to stream from the OBS Studio. We're going to add to the scene a media clip that we can run in a loop. I'll stretch that a bit. And now we have to do streaming settings. So let me reposition the window so we can see both of the OBS Studio and the Chrysalis Developer Console. What we need to do is just copy the values of the RTMP stream server, select the custom, custom streaming endpoint, and add a key. There we go. Now we can start streaming. To validate that our video is hitting the server, we can uh, go back to the console and refresh it just to enable the player. And then we can see if everything is working all right. And this is mainly just to check if we're streaming to the cloud. That's it for the streaming part. Now let's do some code. Here we have Visual Studio, and we start off with really creating Anaconda environment. I have everything prepared, so I'll just paste the Anaconda environment in. Important parts are the Crystalis Cloud SDK, NumPy, and OpenCV. So let's create the environment. And it's going to take a little bit for the environment to be created, but in the meantime, we can actually start coding our example. So we're going to start with the first import. Let's just make some room for the windows here. And we import the OS. You'll see later why we need that. We import the OpenCV, of course, and the Chrysalis a Cloud SDK. Now, it's not done yet, so let's just continue without it. So first we need a connection to the Chrysalis Cloud. So this is a simple connect function that takes a couple of parameters. First one is host. 
and we need to switch to the SDK in our developer developer platform. So let's take a SDK endpoint, put it into the host parameter. Then we'll need a port. A password and a server key. There we go, we're going to name it traffic. There we go. Oops. So after we have that, we can probe a stream. So the probe actually means it gives us a little bit of information what's in the cache. So this probe will give us a start timestamp and timestamp, what's in the cache, and of course the duration of the cache in seconds. Every crystal is cloud. Uh, streaming server has a little bit of a in-memory cache for every stream that comes in. The length depends on the size of the stream itself. So if you have uh, HD streaming, it's going to be less uh, than if you have a, a 720p or even smaller streams. So now we can select actually in the uh, Python interpreter or the Anaconda environment that we created before. So for that, we need to just select the Python 3.7, which we defined in the Anaconda environment file. So once we have that, now we should also have a bit of an autocomplete. Let's try to run this. Let's see what we get. All right, so now we see the start and end timestamps are in milliseconds and the duration is 25 seconds. Uh, I forgot the format. So let's add it in just uh, to make me happy. There we go. That should do it. Uh, let's see. There we go. The timestamps changed, but the duration is still 25 seconds. Good. Now to display a live stream, we need a perpetual loop and the latest image. So we're going to call that latest and we need to check if it's nil. That's in case the camera is not streaming. It might return null images. Now we show it with OpenCV. So our call stream with the latest image, that data. And Let's just quickly examine how latest uh, our latest object looks like. It's a CH image. So the CH image has a couple of attributes. One of our most important one is data, which is a NumPy uh, array, and it's always in BGR24 format, which is why we can feed it directly into the IAM show of OpenCV. So let's just add a method to be able to stop the loop. So in case we hit a letter Q or an escape, we're going to break out a loop. And that's pretty much it. But before we hit run, I want to mention um, latency issues in real time streaming. So I'm currently in Europe I'm, uh, and my camera is in Europe and I'm going to be consuming the live stream also in Europe. But the streaming server is set up in San Francisco. And the reason for that is because we want to later on, I want to demonstrate how our SDK handles latencies and how it handles uh, frame drops and situations like that. Uh, the speed of light is about uh, 300,000 kilometers a second. And where I'm at right now, it's about 20,000 kilometers from San Francisco. If we Google a little bit, that will give us about 133 milliseconds for a light to travel that distance. So that means we're going to have a ping over 133 milliseconds, which in real time streaming is quite a lot. Let's just ping our streaming server, see what the latency is. 
we can we can go ahead to the developer console copy the url and um, try to ping it So we see it's uh, around 177 milliseconds and uh, that's usually not optimal for real-time streaming and especially if we are trying to run machine learning on the other end that kind of reacts in real-time or near real-time. Our platform allows you to create a streaming server anywhere in the world but I'd like you to keep in mind that developer account allows you to create a streaming server only in San Francisco. So if you're in other parts of the world, you're gonna have a little bit of a jagged video stream. So let me go ahead, set up a stream in Europe and, uh, and demonstrate the smooth video play first. Since I'm running on Ubuntu, I need to select a QT display. So, now we're streaming with 20 frames per second and about 2500 kilobits per second. Before I switch back to the server from San Francisco, let's check how we can actually get a piece of video from the past that is cached on the Chrysalis streaming server. So for that, we just use the probe and timestamp. And uh, uh, the, the difference between the past video and the latest video image is the Chrysalis, plat the Chrysalis SDK will try to give you always the latest image. So try to, if, if there's latency issues, it will try to skip anything in between because it's designed for AI. And if we want to do it in near real time, what we want is the latest video. But in case we want to go explore what happened a couple of seconds in the past, we just call video past the image and put in a start and end time. But that will fast forward the video. That means once we run the video past the image, it will always try to get through it as fast as possible. So basically it will get through it as fast as your AI will, image per image. So you see it ended quite fast. Let me try to um, run it on a different piece of timeline from this clip. So it will be demonstrating the fast forward better. Uh, we can see it kind of a little bit better. It's kind of very fast and it ends in just a few seconds instead of 10 seconds. I switch now back to the streaming servers from San Francisco. So let's just get the real time video and see what happens when the latency is quite high. With the higher latencies, Chrysalis Cloud SDK will try to give you the latest image that it can and try to skip everything that it's not really needed for real time in between. That's why we get this jagged video. But regardless, it returns a crisp image. That simply means you don't have to deal by yourself with network latencies and variations in network speeds. Let's keep our Python consumer running and see what happens if we mess with that stream. So I'm going to try to set it up to consume less bandwidth. I'm going to do that by rescaling the output to a, to a smaller um, stream. Let's say this one. And I'm going to lower the bitrate. I think that should do it. And let's lower the frame rate to 5 frames per second. So the both videos are sort of jaggedy. Start the stream. And we saw the Python is trying to pick it up. Or Chrysalis Cloud SDK is trying to pick up the stream. It has a little bit of a trouble until it hits the new keyframe and readjusts the parameters for decoding. So that's going to take until we hit a new keyframe. It should be soon. 
There we go. So it picked itself up and it's trying to keep up with the real time stream, still keeping the frames crisp and clean. Our cloud SDKs is open sourced and probably that uh, in between time with the corrupt images could be optimized or fixed. But let's create now a keyframe every two seconds so it picks itself up faster, which is also recommended in live streaming that the keyframes are quite close together. So I usually use two seconds. So it doesn't take too long for the stream to pick up and provide crisp and clean images. This concludes our first tutorial. We showed how to stream from the OBS Studio, select the media source in case we're trying to develop some sort of AI on the other hand, how to create a Chrysalis Cloud Stream Server, and then how to consume it on the other end with the Python SDK created specifically to feed incoming real-time video into machine learning algorithms. For more information and to get started, visit Chris Cloud.